Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise him. Amen. Yeah. He blessed the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Yes, Lord. Thank, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We praise the Lord for just everything that's taken forth, has come forth on the line tonight. And the encouragement, the strength, I can believe that the Lord is just pouring out his strength on us even as we meet, that we're being encouraged and that, you know, as the songs and the scriptures and the prayers are going forth, that someone is receiving strength. So we're going to go forth and we thank and praise him for just how he moves, how we don't have to do very much for him to move, but he'll move on our behalf and he knows how to meet our needs. So we're going to go forth with the word on tonight, and it's coming from a familiar scripture. And the scripture for tonight is coming from James, the fourth chapter, and it's verse 8. And it reads, Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And the, the Lord has really led me to this scripture because just think about it. We are always striving to be close to the Lord. And those of us that are mature believers of Christ, we're not always trying to reach out to God for a blessing or for him just to do something for us. But most of the times when we're trying to reach out to the Lord and we're trying to get close to him, it's because we want the peace that comes from him, from his presence. We want the comfort that comes from his presence. So tonight's word is encouraging us that if we want to come near to the Lord, that there are certain things that we would have to do. So we're just going to go back and we're just going to read this scripture again. It says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So if we look at the first half of the scripture a little closer, it says, come near to God. And he, in return, will come near to you. We have to pause and focus here for a moment. And just think about it. It says, come near to him, and he will, in turn, come near to us. So this portion of the scripture shows intention, and that intention comes from us. Because we all know that in our relationship, with the Lord that it's not that he has actually moved away from us when we feel a distance but it's actually us that we have allowed our priorities to lead us away from him so now it says in order for us to come closer to him we have to be intentional we have to have that good intent inside of our heart to say I'm going to actually pursue after the Lord for just this for today for this moment when I wake up in the morning I'm going to pursue after his presence I'm going to Seek his face. And the word says, you know, just to seek after him, seek after him wholeheartedly with full intentions. So we know that the Lord has extended to us a daily invitation to get closer to him. He never closes his doors. Heaven never closes for us. Heaven is always open to us that we can always pray. We can always worship just to get closer to him. So the word of the Lord, amen, it says, in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And we all know what joy is. Hallelujah. And those who have actually had the real experience of the true experience, authentic experience of worshiping the Lord and are praying and just feeling the presence of the Lord, just feeling the Lord's hands on you, then you will know what joy feels like. So the word says, in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And joy, we all know, is a gift. Amen? Amen. So the gift of joy that we talked about before, and it's in his right hand, there are blessings forevermore. So not only do we get his presence and joy, but secondly will come the blessings. So first we must enjoy being in his presence. We must enjoy being with him, fellowshipping with him, communing with him, being close to him. Amen. 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 So the word of the Lord also confirms how sweet and pleasant it is for us to be in communion or koinonia with God. In the 34th Psalm, the 8th verse, it says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. You are blessed if you 
you see the Lord as your fortress, if you see him as the strong tower. There's another scripture that says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runneth into it. And in that strong tower, they are safe. We are safe in his name. We are safe with him. And this is these are the benefits that come with the Lord is just being close to him, just having his name, just having the name of Jesus, that we will know that as we use that name, as we are covered under the blood and we have that name, that we are all safe, that, that this, is, this is our portion. This is the refuge that he speaks of. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed Amen. is the one. Who takes refuge in him. Blessed is the one that trusts in him. Those that oh, trust yeah. in him will never be ashamed. This should be your daily meditation, that those that trust in the Lord, that put their trust in him, they will not be ashamed. And I can just go I can just uh, pause for a moment on the line right now and just ask how many people have said, I put my trust in the Lord and God really disappointed me. <laughs> so we know Praise that if we Lord. trust him, that he is not going yes. to disappoint us. He's always Amen. going to come through in his own way and in his own time. Amen. True. So we Amen. are blessed when we commune with him. And many have experienced days where they might have wished, and there may be some people on the line tonight that might have wished that they could just fly away. But let me remind you of the access, access that you already have through prayer through praise and worship. Those are your tools. Those are your weapons. You have the weapon of prayer. You have the weapon of praise. You have the weapon of worship. Those are your, your weapons that you would need just to uh, fight away that depression, to fight away the sadness, whatever it is that's trying to take over your mind, that you have those things that you can go to and that you can, once you begin to pray, praise and worship the Lord, then you can go into that higher places. It says we are seated in heavenly places with him. So we can actually go to that place that he has assigned to us, to our seats with him and just begin to commune. And even as we begin to commune with him, then we'll realize that what was once a burden to us that looked so big before us now becomes small because now he's so much bigger than the very things that's coming after us. That's uh, that's taking away our attention. That's becoming a distraction to us. And that he Amen. himself will work those things out in his own time and in his own way. So all we have to do is to pray, to praise, and to worship him because we know that he is worthy of all praise. He is worthy of all glory and honor that belongs to him and that he deserves everything that goes, all the worship that goes to him. So when we activate these three, amen, God has no other choice but to come and reside with us, to come in our space, to take up this space and begin to work on, work on our behalf. Amen. 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 So James 4 and 8 continues by giving us the conditions and, and, and directives to communing with the Lord. And the second portion, it says, um, is this like a, a reminder from your parents that when they would tell you um, when you were a kid to uh, wash your hands before you be sit down at the table and eat? It reads, wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So if you want to know how to get closer to the Lord, he's telling you, wash your hands, not your literal hands, not your natural hands, but just the wash your hands as far as like the things that you do, your thoughts, your thinking, um, your your the the things that you how you make your decisions how you you handle people that's you know um, you handle people wash your hands make sure your hands are clean you have clean hands because it says who can enter into the um, holy hills of the Lord those who have clean hands and a pure heart so our hearts have to be pure we have to make sure because our hearts it has so much evil on the inside of it but we have. The, that portion of him that comes from our inheritance that we could um, actually overpower that. That is one of the weapons he's yeah. given us through our inheritance through Jesus is that we can actually um, walk into our inheritance of having that mindset, the mindset of Christ, doing the right thing, having the right mindset towards people. So wash your hands, purify your hearts. 
because we can be double-minded. We can have uh, be um, heavenly-minded one minute, and then the next minute we could just be earthly-minded and doing and saying everything else. So we have to have some sort of balance where we are purifying ourselves before the Lord, and this is the place that we are always striving. We're always striving to get to that place with him. Amen. 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 So James the Apostle is reminding us of all, of all, reminding all of us of our sinful nature because we all came here in sin. We were born that way, but we have, um, we have our inheritance. We have um, the the gift that the our heavenly Father gift has given us, and that's the gift of salvation through Jesus. So He's not calling anyone out, but He's just reminding us that we have this tendency of not meeting the mark every day, and some days. Even on our best days, when we think we have it all together, still our sins, as it says, our goodness is like a filthy rag. It's like a dingy white rag. It's still no good. But the Lord will allow us to encounter situations that will test where our heart is with him just to prove the fact that we are not as pure as we think we are. Amen. Amen. So once again, he says, purify your hearts. And when he says, purify your hearts, Allow the Lord to transform your heart. Don't allow yourself to be caught between two different opinions or between two opinions. That is between faith and fear, anger and peace, and the list goes on. So settle your heart and mind by walking in it according to the word of God. Get into the word every day. Don't wait for Sunday. Don't wait for a preacher or a pastor or a a prophet or an evangelist or, or an apostle just to preach a word to you. As the word says, work out your own soul salvation. Study to show yourself approved. Have a relationship with the Lord so that as, as you're reading the word yourself, that the Lord, the Holy Spirit, who is inside of us, once we have given our lives to the Lord, he's on the inside of us, will begin to um, teach that word to us. Teach, teach us the word. Give us revelation. Give us insight. And as we are doing so, then we're studying and we're making ourselves better. So by the time we get to church on Sunday and we hear the word, our Bible study on Wednesday, then we would already have that confirmation. Whatever they're saying is confirming what the Holy Spirit has shared with us. So I'm encouraging Amen. everyone to read the word, read the word. I know that most of us um, growing up that, you know, we may not be used to and open our Bibles during the week, but do so. Pull it open in the morning. Pull it open at night or any time that, you know, the Holy Spirit would just give you that unction just to read over the Scripture, to meditate on the Scripture. Do so. Amen. Amen. And that is drawing closer to the Lord. That's drawing near to Him. So when we settle the matter in our hearts, this will clear the way for us to get closer to Him, get closer to the Lord. And when we draw closer to Him, we begin to experience His peace. We begin to experience His comfort, and then we'll be able to stand still and watch and resolve some things that we can't get a handle on ourselves, because there are some matters that we can't touch, but we can pray, and we can lift things up to the Lord, and he can actually um, deal with people. He can deal with their hearts. He can actually give them conviction. He can deal with them, and we're believing that God is going to do that, because the word says he holds the hearts of kings in his hands, and he can turn it in whatever direction he decides to. So we want to make sure, amen, that we trust him, close our ears to to the voice of the enemy who wants to take us, who wants to take away our peace and take away our joy. So draw near to the Lord, and he will draw closer to you if you do these things. So that is the word of the Lord for tonight, and I pray that it encourages everyone, and I pray that it was spiritual food on top of the spiritual food that was re- to that you all received on tonight. And we give the Lord praise and glory and honor for his word. And I pray that um, even as the word goes forth, it lands on good ground and that you're able to share it with someone else. And also I want to thank everyone who decided it was not robbery to jump on the line every Sunday night from 7 o'clock to 7.30. And um, also for those that have sown season to financial season to the ministry. And we pray, Lord, that the, um, that the Lord would just bless you a hundred yes, for just how you have sown, however, you see, however you're seeking him, and we're in agreement with it. So I'm praying right now. Okay, we're going to go ahead and end our time right now with prayer. So let's go ahead and um, close out right now. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Father God, we thank you right now, Lord, for just our time together, Lord. We thank you for being in the midst. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for just how you're blessing us and how you're keeping us. We thank you for the increase right now, Lord. We speak it, Father God, prophetically, God, that you're going to grant us with increase right now, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you're moving, Father God, in our on our behalf. Father God, through every personal and private prayer request right now, Lord, we thank you right now that you're moving right now in the name of yes, Jesus Lord. right now, that you're touching hearts right now in the name of Jesus yes. right now, Lord. We pray, Lord, that even as we go forth this week, Father God, that you will go ahead of us even as you yes, promise Lord. in your word. We thank you for right now, Lord, that you are a defender, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that, Father God, whatever is trying to come against us, Lord, that you will contend against that yourself. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we know, Lord, that you are a keeper. In the name of Jesus, we know, Lord, that those, Father God, that um, that trust you, Father God, they will never be ashamed. And that we are, Father yes. God, you are our strong tower and you are our refuge. Father God, we thank you, Lord. It's in your name, Jesus. We bless you. We thank you and bless you. How are you going to work things out for us, Lord? Yes, and it's Lord. in your name, Jesus, we pray and give glory, honor, and thanks. Decre decree and declare healing and deliverance on the line and salvation for those close and nearby yes, us. Lord. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Blessed week in the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.